Good day everyone. Today we're going to um, study the definition of the state. Ayoko mo nang simulan yung discussion natin based on the power of taxation or defining what taxation is, although that is our subject matter. Gusto ko mo nang ipaliwanag sa inyo kung ano ba talaga ang source ng power of taxation. So, magsimula muna tayong pag-aralan kung paano nagkakaroon ng power of taxation ng isang estado. So, what is a state muna? Ano ba ang estado? A state is a community of persons, more or less numerous, permanently occupying a definite portion of territory, having a government of their own, to which a great body of inhabitants render habitual obedience and enjoying freedom from external control. So, from that definition, meron ka nang makikitang apat na elements. So, we have um, ano ba yan? Community of persons. Then, uh, definite portion of territory. So, having a government of their own. With a great, uh, ano pa, enjoying freedom from external control. So, from that definition, meron ka nang makikitang apat na element. So, what is really a state? So, people, so these are the elements of the state. Territory, government, and sovereignty. So, yan yung apat na makikita yung elements doon sa definition ng state. So, kap meron pang kulang dyan eh. Kasi yan yung traditional definition. Pero ngayon, meron pang isang kailangan. Ito yung tinatawag na international recognition. Kahit meron ka nung apat na elements, kung wala kang international recognition, hindi ka pa rin mako-consider na um, independent state. Maraming klasik kasi yung state. Merong belligerent state na tinatawag. Yung nakikipag-away sa mother country to acquire an independence. So, pwedeng state ang pangalan niya, pero hindi pa siya independent state kasi hindi pa internationally recognized. So, kapag itong ang uh, limang elements na to na converge there will be created inherent powers so ano ano yung powers na yon so we have the power of eminent domain police power and power of taxation yun yung topic natin power of taxation so ang first element natin ay people people, the mass of population with, living within the state. These are the inhabitants of the state. It is the entire body of those citizens of the state who are vested with political uh, power for political purposes. So, sino-sino nga ba yung mga tao na yon? Nationality versus citizenship. Anong pagkakaiba ng nationality sa citizenship? When you talk about nationality, you talk about race, lahi. When you talk about citizenship, you talk about allegiance to the government. Sino ba ang magiging subject ng power of taxation? Yung national or yung citizen? Yung citizen. Kasi when we talk about the power, we talk about allegiance. So, support to the government or support to that power. Pag sinabi mong nationality, nasa Russian eh. Anong klaseng uh, lahi ka meron? So, kapag yung nationality, titignan mo ang itsura ng tao para ma-determine mo yung nationality. Will that be important to the power of taxation? Of course not. Unless that national is also a citizen of the Philippines. It's like yung mga Filipinos na nag abroad na nakaka-acquire ng green card sa America or in other country nakaka-acquire ng citizenship, hindi na sila subject sa power ng taxation ng um, 
Pilipinas unless um, meron din silang uh, unless national sila na citizen pa rin, nakatira lang sa ibang bansa or nagtatrabaho lang sa ibang bansa. Hindi pa sila nagre-renounce ng allegiance sa Philippine government. Katulad ng mga OFWs at seamen, sa ibang bansa sila nakatira at nagtatrabaho pero hindi sila nagre-renounce ng citizenship nila. They will always come back to the Philippines as citizens of the Philippines. Hindi katulad ito ng mga immigrants or nagtrabaho sa, um, sa ibang bansa na nagpaalam na sa Pilipinas na doon na sila maninirahan at doon na sila magtatrabaho. Iba yung immigrants kasi meron silang uh, nagmamanifest sila ng intention na iiwanan na nila ang, bensang, ang bansang Pilipinas at magtatrabaho na sila sa ibang bansa at doon na sila titira at doon na maghahanap ng opportunity na maging citizen. So, Yung mga ganon, hindi na sila subject sa power ng taxation. Pero itong hindi na give up ng citizenship ay subject pa sa power ng taxation. So, who are Filipino citizens under the 1987 Constitution? Under Section 1, Article 4 of the 1987 Constitution, the following are the citizens of the Philippines. Those who are citizens of the Philippines at the time at the time of the adoption of this constitution, the 1987 constitution, those whose fathers or mothers are citizens of the Philippines, those born before January 17, 1973, of Filipino mothers who elected Filipino citizenship upon reaching the age of majority and those who are naturalized in accordance with law. Isa-isahin natin, sino yung mga citizens of the Philippines? Yung una, walang problema. Those who are citizens at the, at the time of the adoption of the 1987 Constitution. Yung pangalawa, wala rin problema. Those whose fathers or mothers are citizens of the Philippines. Itong pangatlo, medyo may problema. Those born before January 17, 1973 of Filipino mothers who elect Filipino citizenship upon reaching the age of majority. Bakit? Kasi noong araw, under the civil code, old civil code, yung father ang administrator ng conjugal property. Therefore, yung kanyang citizenship, automatic. Yung mga mothers non walang say. Nasa bahay lang, hindi sila nagtatrabaho. Therefore, wala silang karapatang mag-acquire ng property at wala rin silang karapatang uh, mag-possess ng status. So, kung ang babaeng Filipina, Filipino ay nag-asawa ng foreigner, hindi niya bit-bit yung uh, power eh. Ang, magkakar ang susundin na citizenship ay yung sa father. Para ma-acquire yung citizenship ng mother, kung ang anak ay ipinanganak noong bago mag January 17, 1973, upon reaching the age of majority, kailangan pang mag-elect ng bata ng citizenship. Otherwise, the child will be uh, will be bearing the citizenship of the father. Ang malungkot lang niyan, kung ang rule pala ng, ng, ano, ng bansa ng father niya, eh kung saan siya pinanganak. Kunyari, nanay niya, Filipina, pinanganak siya sa Pilipinas, tapos ang tatay niya, Amerikano, ang rule pala sa Amerika, ay eh kung saan pinanganak yung uh, tao doon ng kanyang bansa, eh di anong mangyayari magiging stateless yung bata kasi yung nanay niya Pilipina hindi hindi niya maa-acquire yung ano yung citizenship until ma-elect niya paano ko makalimutan niyang i-elect yung citizenship edi eh stateless person siya so those who are kaya maraming problematic dun sa mga anak ng Amerikano siguro nung panahon ng ano no 
Ano second world war? Those who are naturalized, yung pang-apat, those who are naturalized in accordance with law. So, ito yung mga foreigners talaga who manifested their interest in becoming Filipino citizens through good conduct. Yung naging maayos yung pakikitungo nila sa mga Filipino, katulad ni Yachang, Korean siya, di ba? Hindi ko lang alam kung nagpa, nagpa, ano, nagpa, ay, parang naging persona o oh, non grata yata si Yachang, si Ryan Bang. Si Ryan Bang, o, oh, so, dalawa silang koreano. Si Yachang, tsaka si Ryan Bang. Si Yachang yata, parang naging persona non grata. Hindi na siya pwede maging Pilipino, if ever that is, that was, that is true. Si Ryan Bang naman, na mahal na mahal ang madlang people, siya, pwede siya mag-acquire ng Filipino citizenship. Kaya ang on good behavior ka within the Philippines para maka-acquire ka ng Philippine citizenship. Kung hindi magiging maganda ang pakikitungo mo sa mga Filipino, eh hindi ka makaka-acquire ng Filipino citizenship. Okay. There are actually two kinds of Filipino citizen. Dun sa illustration, ah, dun sa list ng ah 1987 ah citizens of the Philippines, dalawa lang, natural born and naturalized. Yung natural born ay yung parents niya ay Filipino citizen, at yung nanay niya kung pinanganak siyang ano Filipino, ah kung pinanganak siya before the 1973, natural born pa rin siya kasi makakapag-elect siya eh. Hindi na niya kailangang mag-file ng petition for natural naturalization or i-adopt ng Congress as a naturalized Filipino. So, there are two uh, principles used in determining citizenship. First, the Yus Sanguini princip Yus Sanguinis principle which states that blood relations determine citizenship and second the use solely or the use loci principle na nagsasabi na kung saan ka naman pinanganak doon ka uh, doon na doon yung allegiance mo or citizenship mo sa Amerika ang ginagamit nila itong use solely tapos itong sa Pilipinas tayo use sanguinis kahit saan pa yan ipang, ipinanganak or ipapanganak Filipino citizen siya. Basta meron siyang dugong Pilipino. Kaya tayong mga Pilipino, dumadami ng todo kasi tinitrace natin yung bloodline talaga to claim that Filipino brother or sister. So, there are two kinds also of naturalization, the judicial naturalization and the legislative naturalization. Itong judicial naturalization, ito yung magpa-file personally yung tao sa korte para ma-adapt siya as a Filipino citizen. Ito namang legislative naturalization, yung Congress ang magbibigay o mag-award ng citizenship dun sa tao or sa grupo ng mga tao na yan ang tinatawag na legislative naturalization. So, ang next natin na element ay territory. Ano yung territory? Territory is a geographic area belonging to or under the jurisdiction of a governmental authority. So, ito yung nasasakupan ng gobyerno. So, ano daw ba yung Philippine Territory under the 1987 Constitution? Under the 1987 Constitution, the Philippine Archip, the Philippine Territory, the Philippine Territory includes the Philippine Archipelago with all the islands, waters embraced therein. All other territories over which the Philippines has sovereignty or jurisdiction consisting of territorial, fluvial, and aerial domains. Kasama yung lupa, tubig, at hangin. So, the territorial sea, the seabed, the subsoil, and insular shelves, and other submarine areas 
and the waters around, between, and connecting the islands of the archipelago regardless of their breadth and dimension. Yung lupa, ilalim ng lupa, o yung ibabaw ng lupa, yung karagatan. So, malawak yung nasasakupan natin when it comes to territory. So, what is the archipelagic doctrine? Yun yung sabi, the archipelago. Island-island mo ba yan na, uh, na i-consider? Or one body with so many archipelago, uh, with so many islands? Under this doctrine, the Philippine archipelago is considered as one integrated unit instead of being divided into more than 7,000 islands. This assertion, together with the application of the straight baseline method, is what being referred to as the archipelagic doctrine. So, dun sa archipelagic doctrine, kailangan malaman mo rin yung baseline, straight baseline method. Ano ba yung straight baseline method na yan? By using the straight, line base, straight baseline method, the outermost points of our archipelago are connected with a straight baseline and all waters inside the baseline are considered internal waters. So, yung archipelago na hiwahiwalay ang islands, you will identify the outermost islands. Dun sa outermost islands, i-identify mo rin yung outermost part ng no? outermost island na yun. And then you will assign an imaginary point. And then you will connect that imaginary point using imaginary line called the baseline, straight baseline. So, pag nakonect mo ng buo yun, lahat na ng waters sa loob noon ay magiging part ng internal waters of the, of the archipelago. So, the next element will be the government. Government refers to the agency to which the will of the state is formulated, expressed, and carried out. Government is the indispensable machinery by means of which the state maintains its existence, carries on its functions, and realizes its policies and objectives. So, yung government ay lifeless. Wala siyang buhay. It is an idea. It is a system. Kaya minsan natatawa ko sa mga tao, galit na galit sa gobyerno eh. Kaya eh, ang gobyerno, walang buhay yan eh. Ang gobyerno is just an, an, ele is just an element of the state which is a machinery. An idea. A system. Ang may buhay, yung tao. Tayo na tao. So, kung pangit yung gobyerno natin, pangit kasi tayong tao. So, <clears throat> kaya tayo hindi umaasenso. Itunut, itinupush natin, inaano natin sa gobyerno yung kasalanan when we should look within. Kung makikita natin sa sarili natin yung mga mali natin, maitatama natin. Pero kasi tinitignan natin yung mali natin sa gobyerno eh. So, what happens? Di tayo natatama kasi yung mali nandito pero ang kinokorek mo yung nandun, which is wrong. So, dapat unawain natin ang kung ano nga ba ang gobyerno. It is just a machinery. It is a system kung paano mo ipapatupad ang mga kagustuhan ng mga tao. So, tao yung gumugusto, hindi yung gobyerno. Dadaan lang yan sa gobyerno para ma-process. Parang ano yan eh. When you compare the power of taxation, parang LPG yan, gas, or kahoy, or any form of fuel. Spirit lang siya eh. Power is a spirit. Can you, you cannot hold it with your hands. Power yan eh. Pero kailangan mo siyang magamit, ma-process. Kailangan mo ng makinarya. So, kailangan mo ng stove. Kung LPG yan, kahoy yan, or ano. Kailangan mo ng stove para makaluto ka. Yun ang purpose ng government. Makaluto, makapakain, ma-provide ma yung sarili. So, 
tub yung katumbas ng government. Ang kakain nun yung tao, yung mag-benefit, ang magluluto rin yung tao. So, lifeless yung government. Pero ito, gobyerno na to, ang magta-translate ng power of taxation to benefit the people. So, there are common types of government. Maraming forms of government depende yan sa kung paano nag-organize yung mga tao to form a state. Iba-iba. You cannot find, uh, hindi ko mo sa atin sa Pilipinas, ganito yung form of government natin. Sa ibang bansa, ganun din. Hindi. Iba-iba. Kung paano nila gustong buuin ang kanilang estado, ganun sila bumubuo ng kanilang estado. So, pero yung common ay ang democracy. Democracy means ruled by the people. Meron nga sinasabihin, for the people, by the people. Diba? Yan yung demokrasya ang sinasabi. Then we have the republic. Um, Republican kasi, it's also a, democracy, a democratic form of government. Kaya lang, through exercise, through a representative. Sa atin, tayo Republican tayo kasi meron tayong representatives. Although democratic tayo, the Filipino people is sovereign, but this sovereignty is exercised through the Congress. Or itong power natin, now not, ne not necessarily um, sovereignty, but power as a people ay inilalagak in natin sa Kongreso para itong Congress ang nag -e exercise na ito ng powers natin para sa atin. So, other forms ay yung monarchy. So, monarchy consists of rule rules by a king or queen. Sometimes, a king is called an emperor, especially if there is a large empire such as China before 1911. There are no large monarchies today. The United Kingdom, which has a queen, is really a republic because the queen has virtually no political power. Aristocracy. An aristocracy is a rule by the aristocrats. Aristocrats are typically wealthy, educated people. Many monarchies have been ruled by, the, uh, by aristocrats. Today, typically, the term aristocracy is used negatively to accuse a republic of being dominated by rich people. Such as saying, the United States has become an aristocracy. Si Trump, millionaire yun, di ba? So, dictatorship, another form, is consists of a rule by one person or a group of people. Um tayo, pag ang gobyerno natin na masyado mahigpet, we call it dictatorship kasi um, limited lang yung nagpa-participate pero yung discipline ba, limited ba yung nagpa-participate so kung dinidiscipline na tayo pero by uh, by willingness of other members of the state, hindi yun ano, hindi yun hindi yung dictatorship kasi gusto ng mga tao eh. So, a dictator may be one person or a group of people. So, sa China, meron silang Communist Party. Tapos, sa Germany, meron silang mga soul of light na dictator. Katulad nila Hitler or sa Italy, sila Mussolini. Yan yung mga dictator nung araw. <clears throat> So, anong present form of government in the Philippines? We have the constitutional democracy. Kasi meron tayong constitution. Republican, constitutional democracy. So, under the republican democracy or constitutional democracy, there are three branches of the government. The legislative branch, the executive branch, and the judicial branch. The legislative branch it is authorized to make laws, alter, and repeal them through the power vested in the Philippine Congress. 
This institution is divided into the Senate and House of Representatives. Pero tayo, pag sinabi natin Congress, nasa isip natin yung mga congressmen. Uh, ano na yun eh, misnomer. Kasi ang Congress kasi refers to the higher, and the high, uh, the upper house and the lower house. So yung upper house, yung Senate, and the lower house is the House of Representatives. It's the Congress is the entire house, upper and lower. Kaya lang sa Pilipinas, tinatawag natin Congress yung House of Representatives. So, we have the executive branch headed by the Philippine President, now President Duterte and Vice President Lenny Robredo. Ito naman yung nag implement ng mga batas na ginagawa ng legislative branch or Congress. So, ang Congress, binigyan ng power ng mga tao na gumawa ng batas. Tapos, yung executive branch, binigyan din yung President and Vice President na ipatupad itong mga batas na to. And the judicial branch, walang nagsabi ni mga tao dyan o hindi sila ibinoto. Pinili na lang sila ng executive branch at nire-ratify ng legislative branch. So, uh, the judicial branch determines um, the validity of a law. Kunyari, may batas na pinasa yung legislative branch. Sabi ng, taong ba, ng isang taxpayer, e eh, mali yun. Yung taxpayer can go to the judiciary to ask the judiciary kung tama nga ba yung batas na yun. Kung valid or legal yung batas na yun. Lawful yung batas na yun. So, ang judiciary ang nag interpret ng batas. So, let's summarize it. The legislative enacts the laws. Sila yung gumagawa ng batas. The executive branch implements the law. Sila yung nagpapatupad ng batas. And the judiciary interprets the law. So, ang judiciary ang nagdedetermine kung lawful or unlawful ang isang batas na ginawa ng legislative branch or naipatupad ba ng tama ng executive branch. So, the fourth element is the sovereignty. It is the important element which distinguishes the state from all other associations. The word sovereignty denotes supreme and final legal authority and beyond which no further legal power exists. The power to command and enforce obedience free from foreign control. Tama nga ba yan? So, kung titignan natin, parang hindi totoo kasi <clears throat> influence tayo ng mga malalaking bansa eh, kasi ano tayo eh, third world country eh. Ang hirap sabihin na independent tayo kung kakapraso lang tayo. Tapos hindi tayo powerful katulad ng Japan. So, hindi pa natin natutuklasan yung power natin. Pero siguro kung maging matuklasan natin yung power natin kahit maliit lang tayo at watak-watak yung bansa natin, then we can claim that we are truly a sovereign state. Sovereign state. <laughs> that we are truly a sovereign state. Pero ngayon, sovereign state lang tayo eh. Mahirap masabing may power tayo. Parang hinahatak tayo ng China sa kabila. Hinahatak tayo ng Amerika sa kabila. Paikot-ikot na lang tayo. Sumusulpot pa yung mga Russia and other powers. So, let's study a little history on our sovereignty. In 1935, the Commonwealth of the Philippines was established with U.S. approval and Manuel El Quezon was elected the country's first president. On July 4, 1946, full independence was granted to the Republic of the Philippines by the United States. So, ang Amerika ang nagpapalaya sa atin, pero pinalaya nga ba tayo? Yun ang malaking tanong. Kasi when we, when we study our tax system, our tax system is patterned after American law. Actually, the first tax system we have was patterned after a federal law of the United States. United States. When was Philippines officially recognized as an independent state? Kailan nga ba? 
Ito yung tinatawag na international recognition. The term international uh, the term recognition refers to the formal acknowledgement by one state that another state exists as a separate and independent government. Recognition is not a mere technicality. Recognition as ano tayo? A state has no status among nations until it is recognized by other states, in spite of the fact that it might possess all other attributes of a state, including a definable territory and population, a recognizable government, and a certain amount of continuity or stability. So, important in international recognition. Kasi tayo sa Pilipinas, meron din tayong parang ganyan eh, yung ARMM, the Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao. Meron silang people, the, ano, the Muslim Mindanaoans. They have the power to govern themselves was already devolved by the national government. Sila na namamahala sa sarili nila. They have their, ter they have their territory. They have Sovereignty in essence because um, nasa kanila na nga yung power na magmani sa sarili nila. Pero wala silang international recognition. So yun yung wala sa kanila. Kaya part pa sila ng Philippine territory. Minsan yung mga gera-gera, ang purpose niya na hindi naman kasamaan eh. Gusto lang niyang maging malaya at ma-recognize as an independent state. Kasi pag napatunayan mo na na kaya mo mamuhay at i-defend yung uh, bansa mo or yung territory mo against invasion, then you can be recognized as an independent state. So, sa mundo, maraming nagyagyera-gyera. Not necessarily because um, gusto nila magpatayan. Hindi. Gusto nilang mag-acquire ng independence. Kailan nga ba na-recognize ang ano, Philippine territory? The U.S. Congress can determine the status of American territory under American law. It did determine in 1946 that the Philippines was independent. This act, however, did not determine its status under international law. The Congressional Act was just evidence of importance in determining the international status of the Philippines, but was not definitive until internationally recognized. Actually, the Philippines was recognized as an independent state through admittance to the United Nations. So, um, nung na-admit na sa United Nations, ang Philippines, tsaka pa lang na consider na internationally recognized. So, yung United Nations ay malaking bagay yun sa mga bansa. Basta ikaw ay naging bahagi na ng United Nations, kinoconsider ka na na independent state. I remember nung bata ako, pagka ano, Miss Internationally at saka Miss Universe, konti lang yung bansa eh. Sa dami-dami nang nagre-revolt against mother country, marami ng bansa ngayon. If you're going to study how many countries lang noon naging Miss Universe, si Miss Gloria Diaz, at ngayon na si Miss Pia Wurstbeck, makikita nyo kung gaano karami na ang nag-wage nag ng war against mother country to acquire independence. So, kapag ka itong lahat ng diniskas ko sa inyo na elements of the state ay nag-converge na o naipon na, nabuo na. Magkakaroon na ngayon sinasabing powers of the state. So, i-discuss natin yung powers of the state next meeting na. For now, ito yung topic natin. Kung paano nagkakaroon ng power of taxation. Okay? I hope you will follow the discussion next meeting.
God bless and keep safe.